All right, so ignore the mess. We'll call it the land of misfit junk and unmaintained grass, AKA my backyard. I got a project here to work on that I really haven't been wanting to do, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I don't even know what brand this is, but a little go-kart. And she's rough, it's been sitting, it's been broken and booger repaired, there's no motor. Just the perfect thing to fix. So, without further ado, let's grab it, drag it on into the garage. Yeah. Oh, that's an eight horse. Front tires hold there. The quick walk around. The frame is pretty solid. And I mean, the tires even still have decent tread. And granted, they're dry rotted to hell. So we're going to do the right thing and just put tubes in them. Fronts are holding air. A little low, but they'll be fine. Throttle cable is not there. I think I have some in the box. Fair where I have the box. I got a whole box full of cables. Anyways, uh, brake, manual linkage, stuck solid. Don't even want to know what that is. I'm not even going to bother with these one things. Let's see, go from crummy to slightly less crummy. Perfect. So. The back end here, pretty simple, pretty basic, standard go-kart nonsense. You got your manual disc with weeds built in. It's organic. Dust is even falling off when you spin it. So I'll have to see if I can pull that apart and get that moving. The actual sprocket itself, it's got a nice little wobble to it, but it should be fine. If I can mark where it is, I'll try to hit it, but... I think what happened is this thing was sitting in the dirt for a while. You can kind of see it. I had it on a trailer, but this was definitely sitting in the mud for a while. You got a direct line and even some dirt on there. So we'll see if I can't kind of straighten that out. Bearings seem okay. There's no axle swap. Swap. Slop. Words. Mark. Anywho. Um, so pretty much it's just going to be a cheap and dirty revival. Um, I don't have any motors to put in this, sadly. I got my nice little brakes down there. Otherwise, everything else I have is flathead. And, you know, a lot of times with the older flathead motors, you always got some sort of goofing off to do it to make it work. So, I'm just going to do the right thing. And To me, it's the wrong thing because I don't really like them, but I'm going to go to Harbor Freight and grab Pred uh, Predator. <sighs> And in the end, as much as I didn't want to, got a predator. So, now I'm going to figure out a way to describe this in such a way that I don't seem like a complete jerk. But I am trying to do everything I can in my power to not buy Chinese. Now, there was a couple Briggs motors on Marketplace. Go figure I message the people, they're gone. So, I'm stuck with buying a Predator off Marketplace. Usually beat the hell, spray painted some random color, and God knows if they work or not. Probably not why the person is selling it. Or just go get one. And I had a cheater code coupon. So, saved a few bucks on it, not much. But, I'll set up the tripod and uh, unbox it, get it lined up. Also, I'm going to take a moment to kind of see if I can figure out what's going on with these cables. I'm pretty sure they are completely shot. But if I can get them loosened up, may as well just reuse them. I mean, the cable still looks good, just a little crusty, you know. But uh, I'll probably have to remove the throttle cable all the way. Is she that? Ah, no, she snapped off. She's junk. Shut up, Mark. So, never mind. Let me, uh... Dig in my parts box, which is way back there. Got all my cables. I think I have something that should work, hopefully. 
All right, so I did find a cable in my pile of cables here. So I lay it out. It's about the right length. Maybe a hair longer, which that's perfectly fine. I can always trim it down. It is a brake cable, which is uh, slightly a pain in the butt. But uh, not, not in, in the end, not too bad. I got an idea on what to do. I think this end will be the throttle on the motor. Then what I'll do is I'll, because it's all spring loaded, I might just drill a hole through the bolt. And then, uh, or even I'll make a little 90 degree piece of steel. And then I'll put the ball end up in the front so that way it, you push down you pull on the ball whatever it's a throttle cable it doesn't need to be overly crazy if that works for brakes it, it'll work for a throttle so let me get these packed back up get the tripod pull that motor out Uh, the only thing that might be an issue, we'll have to play with it. You get that clutch on there because that clearance is awful close between that motor and that gigantic sprocket. So the torque on this thing is going to be ridiculous. What's a Hemi? So the torque will be ridiculous, but that's all minor. Overall, though, the motor looks decent. The muffler is kind of askew. Not too worried about that. Made in China, what do you expect? And we're gonna do the right thing and uh, not break it in. We'll do a hard break in. Just fill it up and let it roll. I do have a, a zinc additive. I run in all my motors for the first time. So we're not gonna go crazy with it. We're not gonna purposely try to destroy it. Clutch barely fits past it. You gotta lift up the motor to put it in, slide it over anyways. But that should work out pretty good. The alignment isn't bad. Just need to shim that a little bit. Now what we gotta do here is get this piece off. Is the cable was originally part of this weird adjuster. So what I'm actually gonna do is rip that piece of cable out and see if I can stuff that other cable in. Maybe it'll work, doubt it. But uh, see if I can reuse that adjuster. But the adjuster stuck. Put one end out. Get a little heat. Make sure to set the project on fire. Oh god, that smells terrible. What do you think? Is that piece going to come off peacefully? Or is it just going to be a royal pain? Half inch? Half inch. Well, perfect. I never said I was a smart man. All right, now I don't know if this is going to work or not. I want to get the rest of this piece out of there. So, I'm just going to go the lazy way. Vice grips and map gas. So, I'm just going to heat it up until the rubber inside of it melts, hopefully. And then, uh, hook the vice grip to this end and try pulling it out of there. Whatever's gonna work. Nope, not working. Bet the cable is stuck inside of there yet. 
because that end was busted off. And I'm trying real hard to not get burned by this crap. Where are the line cutters? That's going to be nice and hot. Put that outside where I'll step on it later and drag it into the house. Ta-da! At least I think. I mean, it looks like a frayed, a frayed end of a cable. Might have to drill it out to clean it out. That's minor in the grand scheme of things. Still gonna be nice and hot. Yeah, she's still all plugged up with trash, but you can barely see through it. So, and then if I take a drill bit about that size, should be able to open that up just a touch so that the new cable end will just slide in. May as well reuse what I got. Alrighty, so I did it off camera. You guys don't need to see that. Cleaned it out, drilled it out, nice and clean. Now, the metal end still does not fit inside, but I'm gonna take the gamble, cut off the metal end. I'll never find that end again. It should just slide right on in. Look at that. Come on, focus. So that did exactly what I wanted it to. So I now have an adjustable cable. Perfect. So um, I'm going to pull that back out. We're going to pull the wheel off. See if we can't get that brake figured out. All right. I love having power tools. Oh, that's smoking. Gonna come off. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Instant access to this brake caliper and all this jazz. That's completely seized. Eh, not completely, but completely enough. <clears throat> uh, I think what I'm going to do for right now is soak that. And then, uh, oh, look at that. That off just came right off. Well, the wheel actually clamps the brake in place. That's kind of nifty. Free floating caliper. Yeah, that lever don't move. And then that would be. that weird angled piece blah 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 the foliage out of there and the brake pad itself looks all right if I pull it off of there I might be able to actually uh, get that all busted free disconnect the linkage get a wrench on there and just kind of work it back and forth a little bit probably be smarter just to pull the whole thing off looks like it's just gonna be those two bolts and it breaks in half God, why'd I say that word? Anyways. So, put that on there. Wrench on the back. Oh, the wrench not seating out. There you go. Moving, nice and slow. Surprised I can't really get the wrench on there good on the back. There we go. Put that down nice and careful like. Not gonna lie, I'm expecting this bolt to snap. And it did. <sighs> it took longer than I thought. Oh, not gonna hurt nothing. Not like I don't have a plethora of 7 sixteenths bolts line everywhere. Got too much hardware. That's even a thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright. So linkage is all the way. Now we got it disassembled. 
Well, at least I'm bolted. Should be able to just slide the one side off. Pad falls out. There we go. I got it apart. It's stiff. It needs to be cleaned up. I guess that's the biggest problem of it. I mean, hell, just me moving it like that's already making it better. But, uh, Earhart. Hmm. Looks like it's just this one bolt and lock nut to hold both that pin, the pivot pin, and this lever in place. And then once those are out, this middle pin should come out. I think. Hmm. We'll see. I think the safest way is going to be to put it in this way. Clamp it from the outside edges. I need to go too tight, just tight enough. Eleven sixteen. So right away. Honestly, I just had that laying on the workbench. Ow. Okay, that won't work. All right. You can see the road rash a little bit. All right. That's the pivot. Part of the pivot. That's the inside end, and then close this up a little bit. Light touch. Should be able to get that pivot pin out of there. Cheat here. That way it doesn't go flying across the garage. Well, that just has a narrow spot. Just pushes out on both sides. It's kind of rudimentary, but if it works, it works. I'm guessing if it was actually clean, a little sandpaper and what's not, some all these friction parts would probably glide a little bit easier and do the job better. I'm just gonna keep it simple, some 220 grit. That's gonna have a round piece on it, so I'm just gonna roll it up a little bit. Probably a little too much. I'm gonna kind of roll it to match the size of that little pivot or uh, the piece it rubs up on. The friction piece. I don't know the terminology here. Same deal. And then this one is the piece that pushes on the back of the brake pad. And this one I'm just going to clean up by hand. Okay, so started the reassembly process off camera. Sorry, fellas. And uh, I think I have it. Yeah, it goes like that. No? Yeah, like that. So. Once again, nothing overly crazy with this. Put that pin in, and now it should actually, well, it's hard to see now, but let me get that other screw in there, then it'll actually, that'll actually work proper. You got two halves, 
we're going to push in that rod. And the back one just adjusts it, so there we go. That's it. It's amazing how much just a little cleaning will do. All right. Let me grab all the parts off the floor, making weird noises. There's a spider nest in there. I ain't touching it. So I got the two nuts that hold it together, the actual pad material, and the backing plate. Got that, you slide the backing plate in first. I'm just gonna put the side that's already in there first in. See where the pad was scraping. Hey, with just light force, that thing snaps right back into place. What I'm gonna do is adjust it to the point it is level with the body of the aluminum. So that's a good starting point. And we will slide it all back together. You can see that one started rounding off a little bit. Should be fine. And this one as well. Same deal. Put it back and ignore it. We'll start it off there. And then I've got to get another bolt and put that back together. I think it went on the inside, yeah. Because then the pedal actually has a return spring. So just got to adjust that. And there was that one there. That should work out pretty good. It's so right there. Free spin. Slight push in. Full brake. Sweet. So we got brakes. I'll grab a bolt off camera. You guys don't need to see. Alright, scavenge to the miscellaneous parts. And I found four bolts, eight washers, four nuts. And that's the wrong size nut, Mark. Yep. Hey, there's already one there. Good to go. So that's what I'll be using to mount this down. Let's throw some bolts in. Get that engine on there. That in there. These are grade 8 bolts. I don't know why, I just have a big supply of them. You can get them from work somehow. One of the jobs. Alright. All that goofy stickering and odds and ends. So. Well, the goofy part is going to be trying to get the camera angle right so you guys can see the... Yeah, that works out pretty good. Now the motor has a little bit of play yet, but that clutch is pretty darn close to aligned. I think being the bigger chain I might just let that clutch float a little bit. I'll put one spacer on the back side, put the washer on the front side, and the bolt. That way this thing will just kind of self-align as it goes. What I'm doing here is I just bottomed out a, a fine thread bolt here. I think this is 5 16 by 28. Yeah, I bottomed it all the way out, and I marked it. And I'll measure the distance between that mark and the head, and I'll cut that off the end. It'll give me the perfect length bolt. In theory. Let's just see if I have my tape measure anywhere handy or a measuring device of any kind. I did just recently, but I don't know where I put it. Either way, you get the idea. You marked it. Oh, there you go. Mark it there, measure between the two, cut that off the end down here, and then you have the right length bolt.
hope that's enough because that's all I got. Hopefully it should be enough to at least pop it off. So you got the fuel line on and start. Slightly above idle. That might help. And off camera I realized that the seat was mounted on a frame and not through the wood itself it looks like those bolts are welded or at least they're rusted in place so I'm just gonna roll with it so I can move the seat easy enough but I'll deal with that in a minute it's actually kind of a cool cover all right now I slightly rushed ahead Kind of got in a mood where I was actually getting stuff done. But got the chain on there. Very basic. Just, you know, break the link where you need it and put it together. Like I mentioned too, I got the clutch floating a little bit. Mild interruption. So, what I was saying was, I got the chain installed. I routed the throttle cable. Just run it along the frame, exactly where the other one was. It's nice and out of the way. Now what I always do for some reason is I tend to cut down the throttle lever and I also remove that uh, washer inside there. So throttle moves a lot easier. Now the thing I'm working on now, I say now a lot, um, is you have the barrel end for the brake cable I'm using. Now I need to connect it to this part here. Now I could just go lazy and just pass it through and you know, angle it over but what I'm gonna do is it there have tons of room I'm actually gonna utilize because this was the throttle cable before I have this spacer what I'm gonna do is cut a small piece of angle iron drill to the size of that spacer so that it moves and then bolt that in down tight and then put the barrel end on the other side you know come flat and then over and I'll put the barrel end in there coming back to the throttle cable holder bracket thing all right nice and hot and just kind of give you an idea it's gonna go in there like that then you push down it's gonna pull with the brake with the throttle words and things you know places people I'm fine don't worry about me all right this is what we got so far you kind of see the concept there so the piece of 90 degree it's got the bushing free moving and now you know pull back forward and I'm using the brake cable factory key brake cable end as the actual cable end can you see the light yeah it's the Sun it's big it's in the sky over there so this is the return spring setups I usually do I just don't know why I have a I don't know if I'd actually show it on the camera um, very simple very basic I cut the arm down so it's not in the way, drill a couple different holes, find that right perfect tension I need, and then also it's weight reduction in the end, so no big deal. It clears the linkage, so at idle, the linkage is perfectly free moving. So, should work out pretty good. All I gotta do is install the cable and test the throttle out. Hopefully that angle's good enough. Try to leave it where you guys can see everything. That is working perfectly. 
just not quite going all the way back but back here it is so use that to use the adjuster to pull out a little bit of slop we should be good to go as always I do appreciate you all for watching commenting all the usual jazz this is actually my first video in quite some time and uh, like I mentioned I don't know if I honestly I don't even know if I printed it or the printed why would I say print I don't even know if I published the other video yet or whatever it is terms and words um, I had a couple of videos I had done kind of describing what had happened with the accident and stuff along those lines but I think most of those are actually deleted because they were just too boring I don't want to bore everybody to death here and uh, top of it all no one really is going to care too much I crashed the micro I got a huge substantial amount of medical bills since I'm unemployed and uninsured I did that without the noise so it's not like it's a editing issue um, so things are just going to be really rough for a while and trying to figure all that out and I don't know what's going on yet but I'm still trying to get as good a content out as I can just kind of took a little bit of a break for a little while and I'm still here still alive and we got fuel on start perfectly the brake is working pretty good now the last thing to do is to fire up the air compressor we'll slime the rear tires and then double check the fronts their whole air just not great finish mounting the seat and then for the time being I'm gonna rip all these off this is just like you know the safety foam um, cheapest thing you can get is like pipe insulation and as I've been running it and working on it, earwigs have been coming out of here and it freaks me out because I don't want one, you know, criming in my ear. So, let's uh, remove all that. I'm going to do that off camera. And uh, then I'll, we'll get to the sliming. I'll just move it up here like that. Well, it runs, it operates, it has uh, slime in the rear tires. The last thing to do is to uh, do the final cleanup down there in the center section, the floorboard. I got an idea. Good as new. And what I also did as well. Uh oh, it's not gonna do it. Now will it? There you go. Hooked up the steering wheel switch. For safety reasons.
This is mildly uncomfortable. And by mildly, I mean greatly. Oh shit. Yep. Yeah. Well, this thing's way too quick for what it is. Brakes work. Let's turn around. friend that concludes another video it's already loaded up in the van fair lane it's already loaded up in the van I'm gonna take it off to deliver they're gonna be some really happy kids so I call that a victory we got it done from laying in a pile of weeds in the backyard to running riding driving and working perfectly in about a day it's a victory hopefully i'll have this video up for tomorrow i certainly have enough other stuff to work on too much stuff to work on <laughs> but uh i actually got to work on the backyard here soon yeah. but coming up i got uh a revitalizer a dethatcher whatever you want to call it and two tractors to work on so Stay tuned for more. I'm going to be wrenching as much as I can, as fast as I can. And uh, I'll try to keep those videos coming out. Thanks for watching.